You're listening to Magic in Mediums. There are times in which we all want a little guidance and don't know where to go to begin. When this happens with things like finance or understanding politics, there's a plethora of places to go to get real and helpful advice. But when it comes to spiritual matters, things can get a little tricky. In the world where there are black and white witches, yogis, and frauds, it can be hard for the young magic practitioner to know where to go. So this episode is for anyone looking for a little help on how to find community or a guide to help illuminate this magical path that we all walk called life. While growing up, the media would portray those with psychic abilities, mediums, and witches as weirdos or evil or paranoid schizophrenics. Since I grew up in the South, I knew to be careful about who I would discuss certain spiritual or even metaphysical matters with. There were just some communities and areas that were more hostile towards those leaning towards the witchy side. And being versed in movies where whenever the supernatural teen exposed her powers, she was immediately put at risk of being kidnapped by some secret governmental organization, I not only was afraid to talk about psychic abilities in fear of being ridiculed, but literally in fear of losing my life to serve as some psychic spy for a military squad. This fear of rejection and fear of safety due to exposure can make putting yourself out there to find a guide a very fearful, uncomfortable, and possibly dangerous venture. So discernment is key, and location is almost everything. As I currently live in a big city in time where new age isn't so new, and holistic medicine, eastern philosophies, and paranormal are just a bit more normal, it isn't as difficult to find others who are interested in the occult and spirituality. In big cities in the U.S., there are sectors where legit spiritual people can be found. Crystal shops, yoga studios, meditation centers, spiritualist churches, Reiki and drum circles, and holistic schools. There are even meetups via meetup.com for pagans, mediums, psychics, and occult dabblers, with locations in the city for interested persons to engage with others. I have met a now good friend from attending a free class in a holistic school called the Open Center in New York. Just by attending paid or free spiritual events, you increase your chances of meeting a potential guide or friend. Finding a spiritual friend or mentor in the city is pretty easy, but it doesn't mean that only people who live in spiritual metropolitans like Arizona, New York City, Portland, or California can find hip spiritual mentors. Your vibe attracts your tribe, so no matter where you are, location is not going to be what stops someone from finding a magical ally in the physical realm. I find that when I'm ready to learn more and am ready for new relationships and new knowledge, the universe finds a way to give it to me. And that gift of a guide from the universe doesn't necessarily need to be in the form of a physical encounter. In fact, at times, there is no need to even meet a mentor in person. With a slew of spiritual internet communities, you can make a connection and learn from someone just by interacting with them on a computer or phone call, or by just watching them. There are tons of spiritual guides on YouTube and social media that I just watch and feel a connection with, and these mentors also offer their services on Skype or in closed online forums. Victor Otto is an amazing example of this. He's a spiritual counselor who focuses on helping people during their own ascension. There are plenty of other spiritual YouTubers who provide spiritual guidance and YouTube videos in addition to offering merchandise, private mentorship, or sessions. A few of my favorites are Gigi Young and Bridget Nielsen who specialize in galactic starseed astral work, and Koi Fresco and Aaron Dowdy who teach the nuts and bolts of the law of attraction, astral travel, and other matters of import to the spiritual community. Underworld Classroom that goes over everything a crystal-wearing, starseed-believing, magical practitioner in the astral and physical realm would be interested in. And EA Coiting and the White Witch Parlor that discusses various magic and their how-tos. Although I haven't purchased anything from these spiritual YouTubers, I have learned a lot from them, and even more from the comments pages on their videos. Just interacting with the commentators is a fun way to find people who may have very similar experiences to yours and find future friends. 
I find that when going through the comments of two of my favorite YouTubers, Simply Anna Maria, an enlightened author and breatharian, and Do Better For Yourself coach, an expert on crystal and crystal communication, I find the comments to be something that I can relate to and find that in this page of comments, I have found my online family, a group of people with the same interest and questions, but sometimes even answers to things that I have wondered about. I have also learned that the comments page is a great way to help me discern between YouTubers that align with my highest good. As there are a million spiritual YouTubers, there are a large portion that connect with me and some that just don't. At times when I may be feeling iffy about the advice offered by a guru, I just scroll down in the comments to see if other people connect with my sentiment. And most importantly, I am scrolling to see how they have discerned the video and its content and looking to see if these people have an energy that I am looking to surround myself with. They say you can learn a lot about a person by their friends, so you can learn a lot about a guru by their disciples and YouTube commentators. If you find that the comments are filled with personal stories of dark and negative views, then this video creator may not be the best for you to go to if you are looking for more positivity in your life. At times when you are spiritually impressionable, it is important to be able to know how to discern, and looking at YouTube comments can definitely help with that. The rest of this episode will continue after this message. Do you want to learn more about magic, mediumship, psychic abilities, spirituality, and metaphysics? Is there a topic you'd like to be discussed in a future episode? Request a custom episode at magicandmediums.com forward slash create or make a PayPal donation via magicandmediums.com to ensure more magical episodes like this. And now, back to the episode. At times when you are spiritually impressionable, it is important to be able to know how to discern, and looking at YouTube comments can definitely help with that. Two spiritual YouTubers that I am on and off about and have mixed YouTube comment pages are Teal Swan and Infinite Waters. I'm not saying that they are bad, but just that sometimes I just don't connect, and their YouTube page comments confirm that others have judged them in the same way. And I think that that's also important to note. Just because someone is an established mentor with clients and speaking engagements on their resume does not mean that they are the appropriate mentor for me, and I need to be able to discern and admit that. The comments page is just one thing that helps me in discerning if I should look to a YouTuber to be a guide. But a lot of people who are looking for spiritual mentors may be looking because they need someone to help gain confidence in their own discernment. So a great way to do this is by finding lessons from guides that have been tried and true throughout time and have left their words of wisdom that have and will stand throughout the phases in time. Authors. With modern technology, it is easy to forget that we can connect with people from just their written words by reading their books. Lessons and how-tos from authors, and even their biographies, can be just as enlightening, or even more so than having an in-person mentorship. I just recently finished Marina Abramowicz's autobiography, Walk Through Walls, and know her, like know her, on an intimate level, and have learned so many lessons and a lot about myself just from reading about her life from her unique perspective. Just because I can't talk to the author face to face doesn't mean that I can't learn from their pages. I've learned moon spells, how to assemble crystal grids, how to go to the inner worlds, and how to formally meet guides and even read tarot from a wide array of knowledgeable people, all from listening to them from the pages of their books. There are some books, most notably books channeled by archangels that note that by just reading them, you are changing your frequencies which enables you to get downloads and meet with other guides. There are so many inspirational, self-help, transformative, and other books on how to enhance your psychic abilities, mediumship, and even magic that works just as well or even better than by working with someone physically. It sure is a lot cheaper and convenient in most cases. And just like with YouTube, you can look to the book's ratings and reviews on Amazon to see how legit and helpful this person may be. And if there are no reviews, just follow your gut as to whether you should invest time in reading any of their literature. 
Tim Ferriss is a highly rated and reviewed author who I can highly recommend and created the book Tribe of Mentors that contains advice from tons of successful individuals and is available to read at the normal book retail price. Could you imagine the cost of getting that information from physical CEOs and those busy and successful persons physically who are all around the world? The time cost alone in scheduling would be immense, let alone the possible cost charged for their time. But of course, if you really enjoy their perspective and want to have a deeper relationship, it is relatively easy to reach out to authors and contributors via their own site or via their publisher. I've reached out to a few of my favorite authors and have received positive responses and can even call myself a friend of one amazing author who wrote a book that spiritually changed my life. If you are a little star shy to approach well-known authors or just can't because the author is dead and you haven't reached that level of proficiency in your invocation and mediumship, you can easily find spiritual allies on social media. There are a ton of social media groups like Facebook groups that focus on one magical discipline like tarot groups or witch groups, druid groups, etc. You can find people who are interested in your spiritual passions just by searching by relevant hashtags on Instagram. I've introduced myself to a lot of cool people online who just post or like content that I like. Just by searching hashtag psychics of Instagram or mediums of Instagram, occult or pagan, I have found a community of people who live all around the world who are more than eager to share their experiences and knowledge online via post and in private chats. As a tarot reader, I participated in multiple divination challenges on Instagram that connected me with a group of fellow card slingers. And it was from participating in these social media challenges that I realized that there are a ton of people who love tarot just as much as I do, and there are a ton more eager to help answer any questions I may have with it. Reading tarot has definitely connected me with people who are into magical matters, friends, but most importantly, it has also connected me with spiritual guides and mentors. Throughout the episode, I've been talking about connecting with guides in the physical realm, but at times, there is no need when there are guides waiting to help us in the spiritual realm. An easy way to help us connect with these inner and spiritual guides are from using tarot, oracle cards, and by meditating, journaling, or even doing yoga or attending a drum circle or seance. Before I do any reading, I formally invite and thank my guides for their presence and help. During my first few readings, I did this because I knew that they were there, and later on I did this because not only did I know, but I felt that they were there. Once you allow yourself to have a relationship with guides of love and light in the spiritual realm, they will begin to show themselves and their guidance to you on a more conscientious level in the emotional, intellectual, spiritual, and physical realm. You may begin to have visitations during your sleep or see master numbers 1111, 555, 2222, etc. Or you may start seeing feathers or loose change more frequently. Synchronicities will be a constant and there won't be a need for a traditional mentorship as you will just get what a lot of New Agers call downloads. A knowing received from your guides like a telepathic communication that is accepted by you on a cellular level. When you begin meditating or just doing whatever it is you do to have a sacred space, songwriting, running, anything that frees your mind of negativity and enhances its focus and capability for more good, you will find that guides will come to you more easily in the form of a book, in a new friend, in that new tarot deck that was gifted to you, or in the new host of a developmental circle, your new pet, or a character in a Netflix show. There is a misconception that guides are these older people outside of ourselves, or only ascended masters or orbs of golden light, or they have to be met with on a consistent basis, and only in the physical realm, and you have to meet up with them like a shrink or a karate sensei. And in this magical path that we walk, our guides are a bit more creative and sometimes a lot more simple. During a developmental circle, the host had told the attendees that during one session we would all meet with our spirit guides. I was a little disappointed because the host had told me that spirit guides were not animals or angels, the beings that have been my guides throughout my life. 
but that these were just how spirit guides relayed messages to us or looked to us. So during the session, I was feeling a little self-doubt in my abilities and spiritual relationships and was eager to see the true face of my guides. And what do you know? I met with the same angelic face and the same loving face of my bear guide. Sometimes you already know who your guides are and your guides may have been with you for your whole life. A guide doesn't have to be this exotic character that greets us in a miraculous and supernatural way fit for some CW teen sci-fi. A guide can literally just be your higher self, your parent, or friend in the most mundane of moments. What makes someone a guide is not so much that someone, but it is what you learn from them. It is your shift in awareness that turns that person or energy from just being what it is to being this instructor. When you are ready to awake from unconsciousness, you can call whatever it is that brings you from ignorance to awareness a guide. But most importantly, and not in an egotistical importance, it's you that's your own guide. When you choose to be mentored, you are the one choosing to guide your life towards greater awareness, and the law of attraction will ensure that a mentor will come your way. You just have to be ready to learn new lessons. Have you found a mentor in someone you would never have expected? Have you met your spiritual guides or mentors? Are you interested in a mentorship session with me? Let me know by emailing me at magicandmediums at gmail.com. This has been an episode of Magic and Mediums, the podcast to learn magic. Make sure to subscribe, write a review on iTunes, and share. For a recap, products listed, quizzes, and more, visit magicandmediums.com.